Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Designs. I am back with our weekly gratitude project. I am super excited. Sorry for it bumping around. Um, let's pray and we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Lord, we give this time to you. We give this study to you. We give what it is that you're going to teach us today to you. Lord, in everything we do, we pray that we will be a blessing and an honor to you. Lord, thank you so much for all that you're doing today. Lord, please bless this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, friends, so let's get started. Um, let's see here. Okay, yes. I already started filming this once, and then my sweet husband came up. So we're going to see if we're going to make it this time. Okay, this one is about gratitude highlights your gifts. We're on week eight, page 18. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist... There is disorder, unrest, rebellion, and every evil thing in morally degrading practice. But the wisdom from above is full of compassion and good fruits. And that's from James 3, 15 through 17, and that is the amplified version. So, um, where are you at in this spectrum? Don't tell me. Just think about it as we move on. Where do you sit in this spectrum um are you jealous do you have selfish ambitions um or are you seeking wisdom and full of compassion and good fruits uh, or do you do you display good fruit from the lord okay in your life um you will know a believer by their fruit let me just say that too Scripture tells us. So when we see believers um, with good fruit, we know that they are growing in the Lord. And and you gotta and everybody can put their happy face on. Don't get me wrong. But as we go through our lives, it's people that know us over the long haul. Um, have we walked, have we continued in the walk? Do we keep trying to serve God? Do we keep trying to know him better? Do we keep trying to know his word better? Those are all good fruit. Um, when we're um, with other people, what is exhibited? Good fruit, bad fruit. Okay. I know. I know. Jealousy clouds your vision. It causes you to see what someone else has or can do, forgetting all you have and all you can have. Good fruits. It says good fruits, or as the Bible says, good fruit of the Spirit. Come when you view others with a gracious spirit, and when you see and embrace your own gifts with gratitude. We live in a time of incredible social media where we are bombarded daily, visually, with what's the next best thing. Um, I, I have recently, and I've shared this, been on a clothing kind of acquiring venture. And, you know, I guess at my age, I know what I like and what I don't like. And so as I began to buy clothing... Um, some secondhand, some on clearance, some at Walmart on clearance <laughs> and at Walmart. Um, I have just decided, no, those are the jeans I like. I don't care if they're in style or not. That's what I wear. And when I tried on a different style, my husband looked at me and goes, Blech, that's like mom jeans. Don't wear those. <laughs> so, And I was like, really? And they weren't mom jeans. That's just what he thought when he saw me in them. And he's used to my style after 40 years. I'm used to my style, etc. So, um, whereas my sister wears that style and it looks gorgeous on her. Um, but when, when we are so focused on other people or other things, um, you know, being that I was on a design team and worked for um, a couple of different um, planner companies, and what I recognized was I'd always been a frugal planner until, and then I just wanted all the fun stuff. And, and it was, it was required for me to do my job. There's no doubt. And of course, when I do product reviews, but then you just have a house full of stuff <laughs> and whether if you're not going to use it, it's just stuff. So who are we trying to please? Are we, are we? Do we purchase things? Do we do certain things because we enjoy them? Or do we do it because everybody does it? Well, 
there are some things even in my health journey that I want to do because I want to do them. They would be good for me. Um, not that all of them would be good for me, but some of them to me are not a fit for me. And I don't have anything to prove. Initially, I was like, oh, I've got to do it all. I've got, I've got to try it all. I've got to, I've got to do it all. And I realized, you know, I'm a certain age. I have a disability. There are things that I can do and things I can't. And there are things I want to do and things I don't want to do. So we get to make choices in our life. Who are you trying to please? The people that may or may not be watching? Or are you trying to please what God's will is for your life? Even in the way you dress. There you go. Okay. Yes, I said it. <laughs> what spiritual gift gifts has God given you? See Romans 12, 6 through 8 for some examples. So, let me see. I've got two or three Bibles here. I'm just trying to see which one will make the least <laughs> mess when I pull it out. I'm in a really odd location right now because I am turned funny in my with my little table here. So, Romans 6, uh, 12, 6 through 8. So, let me see here. You'll have to forgive me. Uh, uh, uh. And this is tiny print. Tiny, tiny print. Okay. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's laws, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Wow. Wow. So what are you doing with your life? Are you doing things that please God? Are you doing things that please yourself or please others? Um, we are getting ready to be somewhat empty nesters. Um, and I know people at my stage of the game that go, hey, it's my time now. It's me time. And I don't think there's anything wrong in pursuing um, things that that are that you are gifted and talented in. So I'll give you a weird example so as not to step on toes. Um, let's see. Um, I don't in any way, nor can I play ice hockey. So I'm going to use that one. I gave up ice hockey. I gave up ice hockey for everything. I loved ice hockey. I gave it up because it was dangerous because I was raising kids. I gave it up because... I'd have to drive too far. I gave it up because I would spend too much money. I gave it up because it would take up too much of my time. I gave up because it required a lot of time to focus on, on developing my skill set. Now I don't have kids. I'm going to do what I want to do. Okay. Or not kids at home is what I mean. There is some level of, yes, you need to do things that maybe you shelf for a while um, while you were raising children, but do you need to pick something super expensive? Do you need to pick something that takes a day at a time? Do you need to pick something? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? That may be the perfect time for you to take this up, this hobby. It may not be, it may not be. Um, I'd love to spend my day all day long paying, paying housekeepers to keep my house, to get my house in order, to get me organized so that I could do nothing but but scrapbook all day. Okay. Huh. I have plenty of supplies, so I wouldn't be spending the money. Um, hmm. But would it affect my time with other people? Yes. Would it affect my um, time away from Bible study? Yes. Um, there's just a lot of things. Now, can I combine it, maybe, and pursue it? Sure. I can do that. I can do some journal and memory keeping together. Um, and by journaling, I'm talking about Bible, you know, Bible journaling and memory keeping together. There's a lot of things that we can do. So as you look at your gifts and talents and the things that God has given us, what is his priority for those things in our lives? And that is the first thing that we must check into. You know, what's the who, what, when, where, wow, and hi, how, and why of doing it. So... You know, how much does it cost? Where do you have to go? When would it take place? Who would it affect? Um, why do you need to do it? You know, there's all of those. 
that you have to ask those questions. So let's keep going. How, oh, and who uh, can you bless others with it? So let's keep going. How can you use your gifts or gift or gifts to bring good fruits to God's kingdom? Well, like I just said, I could, I could um, scrapbook just for me to get my pictures done, or I could do it with scripture and wouldn't that be a blessing? And maybe one day when I pass away and one of my family members finds that maybe they would be blessed by that. Just a thought. And I mean, seriously, God's just laying this on my heart as we're talking. So <laughs> on that one, um, one of the things I had thought about was um, I have a recipe book for my mom that I made copies of her handwriting. And what I would like to do is develop those for each one of my grandchildren, maybe even one for each one of my children, not this Christmas, but maybe next, and then add recipes to it. And my own handwriting, because it would have my grandmother's, my great grandmother's, my mother's, and my handwriting in it. And then one day they could develop it for their children. So there are things like that that we can do. Um, would it bless others? Yes. Would it cost a lot of money or, you know, how much would it cost? Mm, not much, just a little bit of copying and some journals and whatnot, you know, or, or notebooks or however you want to do it. Um, could it pr produce good fruit? Yes, it could. It could not only produce meals for families, but it could also produce um, an encouragement of remembering all these women who went before us and developed these incredible recipes. Um, and then where, where, um, I, I could then hear from our home, give it to somebody else's home and that would bless them from our home to theirs. And then when at Christmas and then why to continue that legacy. But I would like to go back in and put scripture on each one of those recipes and find some kind of either scripture, devotional, or Bible study to put with it. Wouldn't that be fun? I know, right? Maybe even a book in the Bible. Oh, that'd be good. Okay, hold on. Let's keep going. Now, make a list of ways you can share good fruits with those around you. Highlight a new idea you want to try this week. So one of the, the good fruits uh, that I would love to share with those around me is and I've shared this in a <clears throat> in another video is I'm trying to take recipes from others and develop them into something that we would enjoy that would bless oh sorry guys I didn't know something happened there I went a little crazy my apologies um it hope I didn't make you seasick there sorry um I'd like to develop recipes that would bless my husband and then whoever's at home with us um, right now we have our youngest daughter um, when other kids come over, when we go out with friends, et cetera, or we have friends over for dinner. And I think that those are opportunities, and, and other family members, I think those are opportunities that I can personally tweak something that I am passionate about, my health and um, my health journey. And um, I've always been passionate about, you know, nutrition and eating, eating, um, eating things that would would um, nourish us and not deplete us. And then also, um, uh, then maybe be able to pass that on to somebody else. And then they could then bless their family and their friends. So that's one way. But the other part of that, and I recently have, I've said this many, many times before, I don't see how you have one without the other. So I would want to also um, put scripture all throughout that. And I think that would be an amazing journey. Um, so there's a lot of family recipes that maybe don't fit into that health journey, but, um, I could develop two different types of, you know, um, cookbooks or encouraging ideas. So there's things like that. Um, another way that I can make sure that whatever gifts and talents God's given me that I pass it on is when I'm out and out in public, making sure that I'm encouraging the people that are around me. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. If we don't encourage them at home first. We can't go out and encourage. So that means starting right here where I'm at every day with the people I'm with every day. And um, and there are times that we all have to get firm. There's no doubt. Um, this morning was one of those. But, um, and it was just a simple, the phone didn't go off, you know. But you have to recognize that that's okay. That's a part of being a very real person. Um I have listened to some friends and family who give people endless excuses and will give certain people excuse and not others. 
And then I have seen the opposite of that, that that is horrible. You shouldn't talk that way. You should never behave that way. Da, 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 da. Here's a reality. We're human beings, my friends. We are all going to have ups and downs. We're going to ebb and flow. Our walk, unfortunately, will have that as well. It's how you come back from that. So, did I recover with this family member afterwards? You better believe I did because I love that family member. Um, and they knew they were wrong. They knew instantly they were wrong this morning. Um, but my point being is, you know, each person has to take responsibility for their own lives. So it was up to them to apologize. And then we moved forward. And, you know, it is a part of our journey. You know, we each have, you know, strengths and weaknesses, good days, bad days, great things happening, not so great things happening. And we need to have grace and love and mercy. Um, and there are some family members you give a lot of grace to. And then at some point you go, enough is enough. You know, enough is enough. Um, and then you have to put up firmer boundaries. And that's okay as well. And, um, but no one can be perfect. And the interesting thing is the people that I find that are at times the most hypercritical say things that maybe they should have never said. I'm um, kind of the old, um, <clears throat> got the log in your eye, pardon me, log in your eye as you're fussing about the splinter and somebody else's. Um, and I can do that too. I mean, it's all coming back to me too. Um, those are usually the ones that um, have unreal expectations. And because even in our home, my husband and I, came from such diverse backgrounds with extreme situations. Um, we both believe that we provided a better than what we had type situation. Was it the best? Probably not. We did our best. We tried our hardest. Hopefully the next generation will do a better job and the next generation after that. So I speak that to you guys to say there is grace and mercy as we go about our life, but there's also learn repentance and learning. So when we repent, we're going down the road this way, we realize we're doing the wrong thing and we do a complete 180 and we come back the other way down the road. And when we repent, we learn from our mistakes and we don't beat each other up with them. We just repent and we move on. Now, there may be people in the wake that got hurt and we need to apologize to them, ask them for forgiveness, ask them for grace and mercy and do our best to restore relationship. Um, if they never let you restore relationship in that area, that's on them. If they are working it out day by day, mostly supportive, but like 10% still struggling, you have to give them time. You know, you have to give them time. Sometimes we go through a little PTSD afterwards, you know, when something bad happens. You're just never quite sure, ooh, can we ever go there again? Can we ever say that again? Can we ever do that again? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But you have to recognize what are your boundaries, for, what are God's boundaries for you, and what are your boundaries that you are willing to try or not try. And if you're not willing to go beyond that, you need to recognize people are going to ask why. And that's okay. And everybody believes that they need, that what they think is kind of right, <laughs> that everybody else needs to learn from them. Now, is that always true? Maybe, maybe not. But there's nothing wrong when it is said in love. And I mean in love. They've prayed about it. They're coming to you in love. And they share something you don't have to defend yourself, though I tend to. I'm being honest here. And you don't have to do what they say. God may not be calling you to that. And so, and they need to be willing to understand that as well. I mean, unless it's like abusive and you're abusing them every time you're together, then of course you have to hear that. But I'm just saying, and you don't, you know, not meaning to be abusive, but you know, maybe you always bring up one subject and boy, it really bothers them. And so you have to say, oh, my apologies. I didn't realize that that bothered you. I will work really hard not to do that anymore. Does it mean you have to be perfect? No, you may still make mistakes, 
but you really need to try not to. And you really need to not give the answer 10 times. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot. Oh, yeah, you're so hypersensitive. I forgot. Uh-huh. Or you're so sensitive. I forgot. Um, there's nothing wrong with being sensitive. And there is nothing wrong with accidentally forgetting, but that you are working to correct that. And I think that that is always the goal in these situations. So we are given gifts. We are blessed with those gifts by God. We are to take those gifts and give them away in honoring God, in, in sharing the good news of what God has done in our life, that we can pass it on to someone else. How are you taking those gifts and talents that God has given you and giving them away in his name, not in your name, not for your recognition, not for your out of boys or out of girls, but to bring glory and honor to God. Okay, all the fingers are pointing back at me. They're all, well, let's just do it this way. They're all pointing back at me. I have to work on that too. All right, friends, I hope you guys are having a great day. I pray that it is as beautiful where you are today as it is here. We've got blue skies with nice, beautiful sunshine, and, um, and it's not in the hundreds, so we're thrilled. I know, so weird to say that mid to late September. But all right, friends, um, I'm excited to be with you. I'm praying for you. Please, whatever you do, keep seeking God and his will in your life. And if you don't know him as Savior in a personal relationship, repent of your sin, accept him as Lord of your life, and begin to read your Bible, know him better, pray, and serve him well the rest of your days. He will then have you in the Lamb's Book of Life, and then on that day, that judgment day, when we stand before him and have to give an account for our lives, he's going to say to you, come unto me, my good and faithful servant, because you asked him into your life and you had a relationship with him. That's a very important step in this process. Okay, friends. And that's a part of our journey in this world. All right, friends, let's pray and I'll let you go. Oh, dear Lord, thank you so much for today. God, we love you. We thank you. Please, if we don't know our gifts and talents, please show us our gifts and talents so that we may serve you better and we may love people around us and we may do unto others as they'd have them do as you'd have us do unto them. Lord, please help us understand your ways, your, um, your word so that we can apply it in our lives. And Lord, if we don't know our gifts and talents, can you please show them to us? And they grow and change. And then the things that maybe become a burden in that journey, please lighten our load. Um, you tell us in your word that your way, your way may be difficult, that burden may be heavy, but you make it light. And Lord, we come to you to ask you to lighten our burden, please. We give you the things we don't know what to do with today, Lord. The things that we have ahead of us that may be extremely difficult, the things that we have show up that may come out of the blue and we're not ready for. God, we give you this part of our we give the We give you our lives. We give you all of our lives. We give you every part of us. And Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this devotional and the writer who wrote it. And Lord, as each person hears my voice, I pray that they will be encouraged this day. Lord, in Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. Okay, guys, so I pray your day is blessed, creative, and lovely. Keep serving Jesus well. I now have to go pack and get a shower after I edit and then upload this. So, um, and then we go on our trip. So I will be talking to y'all soon. I love you guys. Y'all take care. Bye now. And as much as I love you, God loves you so much more. Keep serving Jesus well. All right, bye guys. <laughs>